Hi, I'm Claudia. Today we'll look at Jupyter Notebooks. Specifically, we're going to look at how to use Jupyter Notebooks, what they are best suited for, how to launch Jupyter Notebook from the terminal app on a Mac, and finally we're going to do a deep dive into Jupyter Notebook architecture and try to illustrate with an example how this application works compared to all the other applications that you're used to using. For more in-depth tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so that you're the first to know when the next video comes out. Let's dive in. All right, so what are Jupyter Notebooks? Jupyter Notebooks are a powerful programming environment. Specifically, in a Jupyter Notebook, you can write and run code in the same place as well as seeing the results of your code, so the output of your code, in the same place. Besides writing and running code, in Jupyter Notebook, you can also write and format plain text, the same way that you would write in a Microsoft Word document. You can write headlines, you can write paragraphs, you can format that text using boldface, italicized script, so on and so forth. In addition to all of these wondrous things, Jupyter Notebooks also allow you to insert pictures and videos alongside your code and text. Finally, as we'll see in future videos, Jupyter Notebooks also allow you to write code in different programming languages all in the same place. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to focus only on Python code, specifically Python 3, but know that it is possible to write code code in pretty much any programming language that you can think of within Jupyter Notebooks. Now, because it's possible to both write and run code in the same place, as well as see the output of your code immediately underneath, Jupyter Notebooks are actually the ideal environment for somebody who is writing code for the first time. You don't have to run a separate application in order to be able to see the output of your code. You can easily see what's going on. You can easily troubleshoot and debug. So hopefully you can see all of the benefits that starting out coding in Jupyter Notebook has, even for those folks who might not do data science or machine learning, which happen to be two applications that Jupyter Notebooks are best suited for. If you are just starting to learn how to code, it's best that you start in an environment that presents everything clearly, where you can see exactly what your code is doing, and you can easily troubleshoot and find bugs. That would be Jupyter Notebooks. Now you might be wondering, is that really only the case for Jupyter Notebooks that you can both write and run code? Don't all other development environments and IDEs do the same thing? The truth is that they do not. Most text editors, even the ones that are specifically created for writing code, do not actually allow you to run code within the text editor. Instead, you would use the editor to write your code, and then you would have to open a separate application to run that code and see the output. Now, if you've been keeping up with our blog, you probably already know how to set up Python on your computer and you've probably already downloaded and installed Anaconda, so you would have access to Jupyter Notebooks. You can then follow along with this tutorial, but if you haven't, please be sure to check our blog and our extensive in-depth series of tutorials on how to install Python, how to install Jupyter Notebooks. I'm going to include the links to the relevant tutorials below. Now let's launch a Jupyter Notebook. In order to launch a Jupyter Notebook, the first thing that we need to do is to launch the command line, or in my case, since I'm on a Mac, the terminal. I have my terminal open right here, and we'll increase this a bit to see better. Now, before I launch a Jupyter Notebook, I would like to first navigate to the folder where I would like my Jupyter Notebook to be saved and to be run from. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a couple of command line commands to navigate to that folder. First, these are all the folders in my root directory. And I'd like to navigate to the Adlitera directory. So to do that, I'm going to say cd Adlitera. Now I'm going to navigate to the Lessons folder. Now that I'm in the Lessons folder, which is where I want to run my notebook from, I can go ahead and launch Jupyter Notebook. Doing this is actually very straightforward. All I have to type is the words Jupyter Notebook with a space in between, hit enter, 
And there we go. Now, what just happened? What happened is that a web browser page was opened automatically in this case in Firefox, which is my default browser for this computer. Now, what happened here? So let's recap a bit. We went from using the terminal, right, the command line, and writing a single command to getting a bunch of text here on the command line, and then to getting a browser window, which just popped out of nowhere and has a funny looking URL, right? So let's unpack this a bit and see what's going on. So why did we use the command line to run Jupyter Notebook and why did we get this web page to pop up the way it did? One thing that's important to understand is that Jupyter Notebook is not the same as a standalone application like the type that you're perhaps familiar with, you know, like Microsoft Excel, applications like Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word. Those are standalone applications. You literally locate them on your computer. You go and double click on a shortcut or an icon and the application is launched. However, Jupyter Notebook is not like that. Jupyter Notebook is an application with two parts. The first part is called the server. The second part is called the client. If you look at it that way, Jupyter Notebook is much more similar to something like Gmail or Twitter, right? Or any sort of web service. In the case of Gmail, for example, the web page in that case, so the client, your Gmail page, displays an interface that you can use to interact with the server that sits in a data center somewhere. Now, unlike Gmail or Twitter, the Jupyter Notebook server is actually running locally on my machine right now. So the server and the URL that you see here, localhost colon 8888 slash tree, this is the address, the local address of the Jupyter Notebook server on my machine. That said, if your machine is simply not powerful enough to run the operations that you need to run in Jupyter Notebook, you can actually run a Jupyter Notebook server remotely and access it via the internet. So even though in my case, the Jupyter Notebook server runs locally on my computer, it is possible to set it up such that your notebook server runs remote somewhere in the cloud, for example. Now, if you're still confused about the client server relationship for something like Jupyter Notebook or Gmail, it's helpful to think of the analogy as a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, you're the client, right? So you are the equivalent of the client in a client server relationship. You talk to the server at the restaurant, the waiter, who takes your order. Your order in that context is the command that you as the client tell the server to bring you. After the waiter takes your order, they then produce a response in the form of food or drink, something that you ordered. This analogy mimics how the internet works to a certain extent, and it is definitely a helpful shorthand to understand the client server relationship on the web, but of course the internet is quite a bit more complex than that. Now, when it comes to websites, the web page is the client and the server is the computer that serves the web page. The server is usually somewhere in the cloud or in a data center on the other side of the world. Now, let's get back to Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are very similar to a web page in that respect. Jupyter Notebooks use a similar architecture to that of a web service. We have a web page that we can see right here. This is the client and we have a server that runs locally on our computer. So in my case, after running the Jupyter Notebook command, I see that I get a bunch of text here. What does this mean? Well, the Jupyter Notebook command is what launches the Jupyter Notebook server. And all this text here is the server log. The server log tells you what the server is doing, right? So for example, we're serving notebooks from the local directory that has this path. Now we saw how we launch a Jupyter server, which then in turn brings up the client, which is this web page that we see here. The next step is to launch an actual Jupyter notebook. We can do this from this client web page by clicking the new button and selecting, in my case here, Python 3. In your case, it might say Python 2 as well as Python 3 or just Python 2. The difference there is just the version of Python that you have installed and that you are running. In my case, I only have Python 3 notebooks, so that's what I'm going to go with.
The Jupyter Notebook that I just opened has a default name of untitled, so no name. Let's change that and call it Lesson 1. All right, let's dive in and explore Jupyter Notebook a bit more closely. Specifically, we're going to look at how we can add, remove, and select cells in Jupyter Notebook. This thing right here is a cell. We can see that the cell has a gray edge as well as a blue little bar here. What this means is that the cell is now selected. If I click on the cell below it, the cell below is now selected. If a cell is selected, I can go ahead and do things to that cell cell and to the two cells around it. Specifically, I can add a cell above or below the cell selected, or I can delete the cell selected. We can add a cell below by hitting the B key on the keyboard, and we can add a cell above the selected one by hitting the A key on the keyboard. Conversely, we can delete the cell that is selected in this way and that has this blue bar here by hitting the D key on the keyboard twice, like this. D, D. Let's delete this one too. T, T, and it's gone. Now, when a cell is selected with a blue edge, like you can see here, this is called command mode. Command mode is what allows us to do things at the Jupyter Notebook level, so at the application level. Specifically, this is what allows us to do things like adding cells, removing cells, moving cells around, so on and so forth. If, however, I click inside the cell, like I'm doing here, you can see that this edge turns green. What this means is now this cell is in edit mode. Edit mode allows me to do things such as write code. Like you can see this code here. I can delete it. I can write another line of code such as the very creative hi there. And I can go ahead and run this code. One thing to note is that if the edge on the cell is green and if you see this blinking cursor here, you cannot do things to the cells themselves. You cannot do those notebook level things that I showed you earlier. For example, if I try to hit the B key and insert the cell below, what happens? Nothing. I just add the letter B inside the cell. Same if I try to delete it. Okay, great. Two Ds, but the cell is still there. So case in point, we cannot add cells, remove cells, or delete the cell if the border around it is green. So if the cell is in edit mode. In order to move from edit mode to command mode, what we need to do is either click on the outside of the cell. So I'm putting my cursor here and I'm clicking and you see that the side of the cell turned blue. Or by using the keyboard shortcut, I could also just hit the escape key like this and voila, the cell is in command mode. So far, I've been inserting cells and deleting them using keyboard shortcuts. But if you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts, if you prefer to use the menu that comes with Jupyter Notebook, this is how you can do those things. So from the insert menu, you see that we have insert cell above, which inserts predictably a cell above the current one. Insert cell below, which inserts a cell below the currently selected one. And from the edit menu, we can then go and delete whatever cells we want. For example, click edit delete cells and it will delete the cell that is currently selected. Let's do that again. We'll select this empty cell here, edit, delete cells. That's it. All right, that's it for today. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button while you're at it too, so you don't miss any of the new videos that are coming up soon. If you want even more in-depth tutorials on Python and the latest AI technologies, also feel free to check our blog at edlitera.com slash blog, and that link is also going to be included in the description. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.